Hi everyone. So this is our very first lecture and then we're going to just talk about a general introduction to anatomy. We talk a lot about different types of terminology. I'm breaking up this lecture into small litter lecture video pieces so that it's easier to digest. So this first little piece is going to be talking about the hierarchy of organization. And when I say the word hierarchy, it just means smaller things that fit into bigger and bigger and bigger things. So that when you create something, you create it from building blocks. Okay, so we're going to go through that. But before we go into that, I just want to ask you, are you taking notes? Because even though you have the lecture videos, and yes, I know that you can replay them as much as you want, the act of writing words down in your own language will help you learn. It'll also make it a lot more bearable to sit through like a 15 minute video. Okay, so if you have your notes in front of you, it's going to be a much better situation, right? So have your paper, get your pen, and then come back to me. Okay, let's go. Okay, so anatomy. You are in the class anatomy, but what is anatomy? So when you think about it, it's the study of what things look like and the structure of the things. So there's really two pieces to it. Descriptions of the structures and the names of those structures. Okay, so it's going to incorporate a lot of memorization because you need to learn the names of all of these different types of structures. There's also going to be some concepts in this class because I do expect you to understand how the structure, anatomy, relates to physiology. Right? So anatomy is the what is it? What's the name of it? And physiology would be, well, how does it work? Okay, so anatomy and physiology are going to be intimately tied to each other. So we are going to touch just a slightly bit on, a little tiny bit on physiology as well, but it'll be primarily what does it look like and what is it called? That's anatomy. Okay, so when we look at anatomy, you really can break anatomy into two, two general kind of areas of anatomy. First, you have gross anatomy, and no, I'm not talking about cats. Sorry, that's a stupid joke. Gross anatomy just means things that are big enough to see with your naked eye. Okay, so things like whole organs, like this brain right here, or whole structures, bones, those kinds of things. That is gross anatomy. And then you also have microscopic anatomy, and microscopic anatomy just means things that are so small that you're required to use a microscope with it. So when we talk about cellular structures or even protein filaments and that kind of thing, those are all microscopic because they're very, very small. So micro means small. By the way, macro means big. So for those of you taking notes, which should be all of you, I suggest that in the front of your paper, so your notebook, open up the front of your notebook and start a running list of prefixes. Because in this class, if you understand the roots of words, it'll help you remember the words. Okay, so go ahead and write micro equals small. Okay, so now what we're going to do is what I would like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and on that same sheet of paper on your notes, what I would like you to do is to try to take all of these words and then put them in the order from the thing that's the smallest to the thing that is the biggest. And yes, I understand that you're sitting there by yourself, but I think it's a good exercise to sort of challenge, well, what do you think it is? And that's gonna help you remember when I go over the answer. Okay, so smallest thing to biggest thing. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and put a star by what you think is considered to be alive. Okay, so pause the movie, come back. Okay, so let's go through it. So here we're going to start with an atom. So what is an atom? So I like to, do, to sort of give the definition of an atom is the smallest piece of any particular substance or any particular element. So the way to think about this is if you've, got, if you've ever seen any kind of chemistry, they always have that periodic table. And on that are a bunch of different 
elements, different substances with different chemical properties. Okay, so if you were to take any of those particular elements and get the smallest piece of that element possible, that's an atom. Okay, so for example, looking at the periodic table, think of like carbon, for example, or hydrogen, right? So that would be the element, the type of stuff it is. If you take the smallest piece of that, one atom of hydrogen, that is an atom, okay? So next we have molecule, molecule. So what a molecule is, is, a, is two or more atoms bound together. Okay, so for example, if I said that this was a hydrogen, so one atom of hydrogen, if we took two hydrogens and bound them to an oxygen, so H2O, what do I have? I now have water. Okay, so water would be an example of a molecule because it incorporates two or more atoms. So do you start to see what I mean by hierarchy? You have smaller building blocks that come together to build a bigger thing, okay? Now the next one is macromolecule. And typically in classes, students usually sort of struggle with what that is. The answer to that is if you look at this prefix here, macro, macro means big. So uh, hopefully on your running list of prefixes, you wrote micro means small. I also want you to include macro means big. Okay, so if we're just looking at a macro molecule, that just means a molecule that is very big, large, and complex. Do you know any macromolecules inside of your body that are big, large, and complex? So a couple of examples could be things like proteins. Proteins have a lot of little tiny subunits that all come together to make these very large complex molecules. Also things like carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made up of smaller pieces called sugars or saccharides, monosaccharides. Things like lipids and your DNA. Your DNA is a really big complex molecule, right? So you've got individual small pieces that come together and fold and fold and create these very complex molecules. That is a macromolecule. Okay, and then from there, you're going to start to create an organelle. Now an organelle, I like to just sort of to think of it as sort of the organs inside of a cell. So they're just cellular structures with a particular function, okay? So an organelle is just one specific cellular structure that has a specific function for that cell, okay? So does anybody happen to recognize this organelle? This is a mitochondria. And I know that because it has two layers. It has an outer layer, an outer membrane, and it has an inner membrane here. And that inner membrane is all folded up to create like a zebra stripe on it. Okay, so this is a mitochondria. A mitochondria, what we call the powerhouse of the cell, it has a specific function for that cell found inside of a cell. That's an organelle or a little organ. That's what that means. Okay, so if you take all of the different structures, all of the different organelles, and they come together, they create a cell. Okay, so a cell is usually defined as the smallest unit of life. Okay, they always use that word unit. So what does a unit mean? One unit is the smallest piece of something. So the way I like to describe this is if you look at a ruler, and on that ruler, so the whole ruler is one thing, one full ruler. And on that ruler, the ruler is broken up into inches or centimeters, whether or not you're looking at whatever system you're using. And each one of those pieces is one unit. Okay, so a unit is the smallest piece of a whole. Okay, so when we're looking at this, if you're looking at the cell, it's the smallest piece that makes up a body. So one important thing to understand is that everything we've looked up to at this point, yes, it is smaller than a cell, but they are not considered to be alive. 
Okay, so a cell is the smallest living unit inside of an organism, of inside of a full being. Okay, so smallest living unit inside of a whole being. And each one of those different cells, we're going to talk about cells a lot in my next lecture. We'll talk about the structures inside the cells and we'll talk about what a cell means. Okay, so if you take a collection of cells, so a group of cells, and they do a particular function, then you have a tissue. Okay, so I'm hoping you start to see the pattern here. A group of something given a particular function makes something bigger. So a group of cells given a particular function creates a tissue. Okay, so for example, in this picture here, this is called simple squamous epithelium. That would be an example of a specific tissue type. And that specific tissue type can be found lots of different places in the body. Okay, so if you take a collection of different types of tissues and put them all together and give them a particular function, then you create an organ. Okay, so does anybody happen to know what this organ is? This is your stomach, okay? So when you look at a stomach, the stomach has a lot of different types of tissues in it. It's got smooth muscle for contraction and moving stuff around. It's got epithelial tissues to line all the surfaces. It's got connective tissues to put it all together. So lots of different types of tissues all going in to create one structure with a particular function, which is digestion. And now you have an organ. Okay, so organs include things like stomachs and livers and small intestine and brain. They can also include things like your skin. You usually forget your skin is an organ as well. So a group of tissues with a particular function creates an organ. And then from there, we, if you collect a several different organs and give them a general function, then you get an organ system. Okay, so a group of organs with a particular function is an organ system. So for example, here, this is the stomach there. There's the stomach. What organ system did we show you? This is the digestive system. Okay, so let's talk really briefly, make sure we're all clear on the difference between an organ and an organ system. Organ means one structure. This stomach, one structure. Organ system means more than one organ, okay? So in order for it to be a system, it has to include more than one organ. So on a quiz or something, if I ask you to name an organ that's related to blah, 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 make sure you give me an organ. Don't give me an organ system, okay? No digestive system, cardiovascular system, those are systems. They include more than one organ in them. Okay, and then if you take that, you take all the different organ systems and they're all working together to create one organism. So an organism would be the full, whole creature, the whole being. Okay, so really as a hierarchy, you have a collection of something smaller that work together to make, to do a particular function. Okay, patterns. Okay. We talked about cells. Remember, cells are the smallest piece of the body that's considered to be alive. Atoms, molecules, macromolecules, organelles, smaller, but not alive. Okay, so we'll talk more about that later, what it means to be alive. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for this little piece. Please go on to the next segment, and we're going to talk about the language of anatomy.